I'd like to say how honored and happy and grateful I am to be here and I would like to thank you all for coming to this uh, occasion and giving me an opportunity of saying a few things. I'd like to thank Fabrizio Barker for his very kind remarks and to all the friends to be entirely objective, so I won't uh, object to that, but <laughs> thank you very much. And I'd also like to thank um, um, Carlo and Giovanni if I may call you that for inviting me and giving me this occasion. Thank you very much indeed. Well, uh, the topic of this uh, lecture was fixed actually, I think, by Giovanni, uh, namely um, ethics, democracy, and public administration. Oh, by, by you, <laughs> oh, by Fabrizio. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, whoever it is, <laughs> thank you, yeah. But anyway, whoever picks it, that's the subject of the lecture. <laughs> um, so I begin the talk. A, a famous song by the Beatles in 1965 lamented about problems that had suddenly appeared compared with the easy life of the past. I quote from the song, Yesterday all my trouble seemed so far away, now it looks they are here to stay. And then there's a lament, oh, I believe in yesterday. I think most of you know that song. It's a lovely song, one of the rest of Beatles, and that's quite a hard competition, too. But in this marvelous uh, song, what we can see uh, is something of a reflection of what's going on today, because in some ways we could say much the same thing. Think, look, trouble seemed very far away uh, not long ago and suddenly we recognize that they are here to stay. Not only they are here, but they are not going away. We seem to be suddenly besieged by a great many problems that are refusing to budge. In this talk, I shall largely concentrate in one of the big problems, that of the huge economic crisis that is refusing to go away. We <coughs> must not, however, forget Fabrizio, can you give me that glass of water, do you think? No, yeah, okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, concentrate on the problem of the huge economic crisis. We must not have to forget, and that we must remain in our background when we discuss the economic crisis, forget that we also have, would it be better to have that? Do I hold it or just leave it like that? Is that doing anything? Can you hear me? Okay, all right. I'm not going to repeat what I said earlier. <laughs> um, we must not forget that there are other problems to face and address. For example, the growing seriousness of the environmental threat, um, which has grown, but also our recognition of it has expanded, and the persistence of terrorism and global violence, which are also refusing to go away and there doesn't seem to be any very spectacular way of solving it that is available at hand. Both give us much reason for pessimism about the return of quiet and peaceful times of quote-unquote, ooh, damn. I usually have at least one accident a day. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's my main accident today. <laughs> I'll have from here. Um, so, in the peaceful times of yesterday, the pessimism that we have today includes all these things, but I'm going to concentrate on the crisis and related to that, many features of economic inequality across the world, even within many countries, which seem to get, get, be getting worse and not better. Public administrators have an extremely important role to play in identifying with clarity the problems we face, in proposing remedies with foresight, and in helping to solve problems through intelligent and informed action. It's wonderful that this conference is aimed at the role of public administration with a clear-headed recognition of the need to ask the question, the crisis, and then. The fact is, the then, quote-unquote then, that is what is to come, 
is not a matter only of prediction. It's also a matter of our own effort and the effectiveness of these efforts in remedying the crisis. And related to that is the important question of social ethics, since that is central to remedying the short-run problems of the economic crisis, as well as addressing the long-run challenges of inequality and injustice. So what about the recession and the economic crisis that surrounds us today? The crisis had a global origin, but most strongly and most clearly, it got started in the United States of America. It came as a bit of a surprise to many people, including many economists, though here I must assert that many of us had written, actually, about the fragility of the economic prosperity that we were seeing, and which we took to be much hardier than, in fact, it was. The global economy taken as a whole had shown remarkable buoyancy since the end of the Great Depression and the end of the Second World War, based on increased use of global markets, but also, especially in Europe and America, but also Asia, of the role of the state, both in making use of regulation to prevent the excesses of the market operators and in supplementing the market through various provisions of social support and social security for the less privileged, which in the case of Europe and parts of Asia and Latin America, though not the United States, included state-financed universal health coverage for all. Also, in most of these successfully advancing economy, economies, there was substantial state regulation to prevent gross misdirection of market transactions. Why did the economic crisis occur? There are undoubtedly many different causes behind the emergence of the present economic predicament. And it would be silly to look for a full causal picture in a short statement of the kind that I can present today. But certainly, faulty management of the economy based on a simplistic understanding of what the market economy does or does not achieve played a big role in making the crisis possible. But what can we say about the forces underlying the crisis? Here I'm going to become more, more old-fashioned than you might expect. Going back not so much to Keynes, which has become quite fashionable now, but much further, all the way to Adam Smith, I would argue that in understanding the genesis of the crisis, we can get a great deal of help, perhaps rather surprisingly, from the writings of the person, Smith, who we rightly regarded as often described as the father of modern economics. That the writings of old Smith may be relevant for understanding our contemporary economic crisis may appear to be extremely surprising. This is because, first, Adam Smith wrote a very long time ago, indeed in the 18th century, at the time of the very birth of modern capitalism. And it's hard to imagine that his ideas remain still relevant after a quarter of a millennium. Smith's first book, The Theory of Moral Sentiment, came out in 1759. In fact, last year was the 250th year anniversary, and I had the privilege of writing a long introduction to the Penguin's anniversary edition of The Theory of Moral Sentiment. I think it's one of the greatest books ever written in the history of the world, and also one of the most neglected try to explain that, and it did come out in 2009 by the skin of its teeth, by December 31 or something, so that the 250th anniversary could still be counted. I think the Italian translation hasn't yet appeared, but it will, I gather. Smith's second book, The Wealth of Nation, appeared at the same time as the American Declaration of Independ Independence in 1776. Long time ago. The second reason for surprise comes from the fact that Smith is often taken to be a great admirer, even an apologist, for the excellence of the market economy, with no faults of the kind that the nasty economic crisis around us have thrown up. 